the coming age of Gali, men will have short lives. Their intelligence and memories will be diminished. Not only this, they will also be faithless, misguided, corrupt, hypocritical, quarrelsome, unlucky, and above all of this, always disturbed. What will be the ultimate benefit of such unfortunate souls? The Vedas recommend the performance of sacrifices as a means by which men's all activities can be purified. However, such a process is not easily accessible to all classes of men. Thus, I will divide the one Veda into four parts in order to simplify it for the benefit of all humanity. Dividing the Vedas and writing the Puranas, the fifth Veda and Mahabharat, Vyasadeva began to reflect. <coughs> I am feeling incomplete, though I myself have mastered and written all the Vedas. so worried? What is on your mind? You have written all the Vedas, the Brahma Sutra, the Puranas, Upanishads, the Mahabharata, yet you are dissatisfied. How is this possible? Oh, Gurudev, I have just been wondering this very same thing. I cannot understand. O oh, Gurudev, you are the knower of everything. Please tell me, what is the cause of my discontent? You have overemphasized dharma, artha, karma, and moksha. In other words, you have given great importance explained in great detail. Economic development, religiosity, sense gratification, and liberation. And you have not given importance to pure bhakti. The people in general are naturally inclined to rejoice, and you have encouraged them in this way, in the name of religion. Therefore, for those who are not so well situated due to their material attachments, 
people to be given the opportunity to attain the highest goal in life through the transcendental descriptions of the activities of the Supreme Lord. Oh yes, that's right. I have not written anything like that. Did you write how Krishna, the Supreme Lord, has become the son of Nanda and Yashoda, and how although he is unconquerable, he is conquered by their love and affection, and the love and affection of his friends like Subal and Sridhar, who even defeat him in wrestling. Krishna, take this.
Krishna comes to pacify her in various ways. Because of his nefarious activities, he has displeased her. He tries to pacify her again and again. He places his peacock feather at her lotus feet. And then his dear most flute. And if even that won't satisfy her, he will place his head at her lotus feet. And he'll sleep. I will never cause any offence at your lotus feet ever again. Please excuse me. Please believe me. I will never do it again. How beautiful these sweet pastimes. Have you written any of these sweet pastimes? laments for these gopis and feels separation for them, cries and cries in separation for them, even though he is up marul, up to calm, completely self-satisfied and without any material attachment. Have you written any of these things? Oh, Gurudev, how could I write about such confidential moods? I have no realization. What can I do? You should meditate and enter Samadhi. And when, by the mercy of Bhakti Devi, Krishna's pastimes manifest in your heart, you should write them down for the benefit of all humanity. Sri Narada Muni then told Srila Vyasadeva his own past history, explaining how he attained Uttama Bhakti. He described how, by serving pure devotees, hearing their Hari Kata and taking their Prashad remnants, he became purified. Then he explained how his mother was bitten by a snake and died when he was only five years old and taking it as the special mercy of the Lord. He left for the forest and began to meditate upon Paramatma, the Supersoul.
appeared to me. But in a moment, you disappeared, leaving me broken hearted. What can I do? How can I live my life without seeing you? I must again meditate on your exquisite form. However, although repeatedly meditating and concentrating on the Lord in my heart, that attractive form did not manifest again. I became so dissatisfied and so aggrieved. But then, the merciful Supreme Lord spoke to me with gravity and pleasing words just to mitigate my grief. O oh, Narad, I regret that during this lifetime you will not be able to see me anymore. As it is not so easy for those who haven't perfected their bhakti and are not completely free from all material taints to see me. O oh, virtuous one, I have given you darshan of my form only once, just to increase your desire for me. Because the more you hanker for me, the more you will be freed from all material desires. Thus you will achieve a transcendental form as my eternal associate and forever see me. Transcendental Vina, the name, fame, glories of the Lord constantly. It is personally experienced by me that the only way to cross over this ocean of nations is to constantly hear about, glorify, and remember the transcendental activity, name, form, qualities, and pastimes of the Lord. O Vyasade, therefore you should please vividly describe the transcendental activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. O Brahmana, now I have explained to you my bhakti activities for self-realization as you have asked. Now I will leave all my blessings unto you.
illusion, and fearfulness. story right. oh my heartly blessings to charu chandrika narad goswami and shiva dyas dev very good row also the role of Das Dev who was meditating and Krishna came and uh, in Narayan form and he showed him. Nara. And then also very beautiful narrations of all oh, so many sweet past times of Krishna came and all you enjoyed. <laughs> So my heartly blessings to all those who have taken part in the drama play. Go Prima!
Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Sami Dinami
Yes, Frankfurt International Airport. Tomorrow there will be a fire yagna just outside the temple room at 10 o'clock. So that means no darshan, right? Yeah, darshan. That's what is here. Okay, so darshan will be at the same time inside. We can have fire yagna at 9.30. 9.30? Okay. All right, so fire yagna at 9.30. Uh, Tonga Vidya Didi invites all ladies at 11.30 to this hall, to the hall entrance actually, for an SIS meeting. It's for ladies only. Please come. If you want to know what SIS is, you will find out when you come. Otherwise, you won't. <laughs> and another thing, tomorrow evening, before the evening program, we request all the devotees who have brought their deities with them to remove them from the altar there. Tomorrow evening, before the program begins, we would like to ask you to remove the deities because after the program, we will start taking down the decoration and preparing to bring things to what they were before we had the festival. Here. Thank you. My millions of dandak pranam in the lotus feet of my Paramaradhatam Guru Pat Padma. Om Vishnu Bhasi Shmad Bhakti Pragyan Kisho Goswami Maharaj. And same in the Lord's feet of my Shiksha Guru, Om Vishnu Bhasi Shmad Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. Now Sukhdai Goswami began to tell all other should pastimes which took place. One day in Krishna Kal, in hot summer day, summer day, when Krishna was cow herding, the boys became very, very thirsty. And there, they saw Jamuna was flowing, but they don't knew that now Kali has made this. And then at once some cows and some friends took some water and drank. At once they became 
fan heater. Then Krishna saw that and then by his eyes he looked and through that Amrit gave nectar and they again alive. Then he began to think, oh this is very bad that Kaliya is here. Anyhow, this is very nearer to Vrindavan, so I must do something that Kaliya should go away from here. And then what became? First of all, I will from obeisance and to the merciful guardians of my poor devotion, Sri Srimad Bhaktivinoda Sri Prabhupada, Sri Srimad Gogovinda Goswami Maharaj, and His Divine Loving Grace, Sri Lakurudev. So now we are in Vrindavan, and we have seen that uh, Kanks, Raja Kangsa has sent one by one all his henchmen to try to kill Krishna. Now, here we come to another character. He's the only character that Krishna will you know, subdue, which is not sent by Kamsa himself. Kaliya was already there instead. He's a unique character there. Now, the question can be asked, but why Kamsa himself didn't come? Kamsa was stronger than 10,000 elephants, and why he has sent people one after another? So there is an interesting story. Just prior to Krishna's birth, Kamsa crossed the Jamuna to come to Vrindavan. As soon as he came across, Purnamasi Yogamaya caught him, and she dipped him in the Jamuna, and he came out in the old body of an old lady. Then the gopis came and they gave him all kind of cores. He had to wash the dishes, he had to do kodang patties. And he was in so much distress, he begged and begged Purnamasi, and she said, one condition, you never come back to Vrindavan. That's why he was sending other people in his stead. That's a little discretion. So after sending all those people, uh, still Krishna was you know, uh, doing well in Vrindavan. Then Krishna, after seeing that his friend had been poisoned by Kaliya, he decided something must be done. Now, it's a long, long story. I don't know if I should tell the whole thing. You know that Garuda, the king of snakes, is a natural enemy of the snakes, the king of the birds. No, he was in, uh, there was a trust made, an arrangement made by the snakes and Garuda. Because Garuda would come just swoop down on a snake, anyone, and just take him. So they decided, let's make a deal. Every month we'll give you a certain amount of snakes, and you'll just be satisfied with that, and not come and just, uh, no, ransacking the whole place, killing so many snakes. So the deal was made. But Kaliya was a very crooked snake, and... Sometimes before Garuda would come, he would come and eat the snakes himself. So Garuda was very, very angry and he decided, I will kill this Kaliya. Now Kaliya knew that Garuda, there was only one place in the whole world he couldn't come. That was this Kaliya Rad, this lake in Jamuna. Because previously, Sobari Muni had been doing austerities in the Jamuna. And Garuda, not only he eats fishes, he also eats uh, snakes, he eats also fish. So one day he came and he took the leader of the whole flock of fish. And so Barimoni was been doing his meditations there. He, can, he kind of felt that he was a well-wisher, the protector of the fish. And the fish were in great distress. So Barimoni took it upon himself to give a curse even to the bird you know, carrier, great devotee Garuda. So he cursed him. He said, if you ever come back here, you will die. This is a fact. Kaliya was the only one who knew about that. So when Garuda decided to kill him, he thought, oh, only one place I can take shelter of, this place. So he went to Vrindavan, and he took shelter in that Kaliyarad. Now, because of his you know, nasty nature, actually, among all obstacles to bhakti, Kaliya represents dvesh, envy, personified malice. You know that Thakur Bhaktivino, the seventh Goswami, he has explained that when Krishna appears in Vrindavan, he takes away the mundane conception, which is inherent in the conditioned soul's conception of the spiritual world. But not only does he do that, but after he removes one by one all the obstacles to the ecstatic emotions of Braj. So after so many obstacles, now we've come today to the tenth one, which is you now subduing Kaliya. Kaliya represents malice, 
envy, thresh, and we know snake, they're very envious. When I was a young devotee, Prabhupada once told a story that if you kill, in my apartment there was some cobra who had been killed, Prabhupada said, oh, you must kill him and cut his head and pierce his eyes. Because there's so many envious living entities ready to take a snake body, if you don't do that, some other soul will come and then it will enter the dead body and it will go on again. So, so snake means envious, enviousness, dvesh, malice. And Kaliya is this personified malice. Now, Mukut Shiromani Gurudev, he has given a very nice purport to that. No, he is the king of all Rasik Vaishnavas. And he has explained a few years ago, maybe some of you remembered, that when Gurudev was given an explanation of Yashamati Nandan Bhajan, he was explaining Yashamati Nandana Bharajabharam Nagara Gokularam Sanakam. Oh, so much nectar is flowing. Then suddenly, in the middle of a pot of nectar, there is Kaliya Daman. And what does this poisonous snake come to do in a pot of nectar? But Gurudev with his Rasik vision is that explained, no, no, this pastime actually is a Purvarag pastime. Krishna wanted to show his prowess to the young gopis. He came in the mood of you know, Dhirodhata, hero, showing his valor, his prowess, his beauty. And he took advantage of that Lila to come and dance on a very, very moving platform. We're coming to that now. Krishna was thinking, I have to read Vrindavan of this rascal poisoning Jamuna. The, uh, um, Kaliya was living with his family, his friends, his associates, his children, his wives there. And he had 101 heads, you know, the 100 heads of lust, you know, our old friend and enemy that we all know about. You know, all the different varieties of lust, you know, that's 101 heads of Kaliya. And from each head, he was, so much poison was emanating and boiling, boiling, boiling the water of Jamuna and poisoning everything. To such an extent that you've all read in Krishna book or heard before that even a bird flying above, the water was so poisonous, <laughs> Ram Nam Satyahe, he would go down in the water. He would be finished. And every creeper, every tree, everything around the lake, Kaliyalad, had been died. Except for one tree, who had received one drop of nectar carried by Garuda, in a previous pastime, and that tree was waiting with the hope, oh, how can I do some service for Sri Krishna? Sri Krishna Chakravati Pad explained like this. So Krishna decided, I'm going to chastise that rascal and get, you know, get rid of him. So he climbed on the tree, tucked his clothes, and swam down, jumped down in the lake. Now Krishna's weight, it is said that when Krishna jumped, the weight of the whole universe was in his stomach, his abdomen, right? So when he jumped inside, the waves, they went to the sky. And miles and miles outside, like that. And Krishna started to play in the water. Making such a beautiful sound, in the, splashing the water, playing, that at once Kaliya understood, someone is trespassing in, my, trespassing in my kingdom. He became very upset. So, at once he came. And he attacked Krishna. He beat him, beat him on the chest and he caught him. And Krishna, at the beginning, he played like he was just an ordinary human boy. After all, this is not about Lila, human like pastimes. And he uh, allowed the snake to catch him within his coils. And for some time he was lying there. Now, at the same time when this happened, so many omens, bad omens, started to manifest in Vrindavan, in the land, in the sky, in people. All the cardboard start to have the left eye twinkling, which is a bad omen according to Vedic culture. And they all felt something wrong is going on. Or maybe Krishna has been killed. This is very bad. Or Sandibal, all, all kind of bad omens were there. So some cowards, they were raising, raising the cows nearby and working in the fields. They came and they saw that Krishna is there in the middle. They, Krishna, they're dear, no, they're lala. Dear more, more the, dearer than their life is when the cords that no, gigantic snake. So they felt so aggrieved. So immediately they sent the news back to Vrindavan and everyone started to come. And they say that just by seeing Krishna's lotus feet, there were thousands and you know, lakhs of people, cows, cows, they all came to the bank of the lake. But Krishna's lotus feet are so special that they could trace him among all the different footprints, hundreds and thousands of footprints. They could see, oh, this is all Lala's footprints, up to the bank of the river. It is said that no, Mother Yashoda, she was completely mad in, in anguish. You know that Mother said, Mother Yashoda, her love is so great. 
She can give up millions of bodies just to spare one sweat bead on the forehead of Krishna. So imagine how much anxiety was hers when she saw her darling, no, Lala, Kaniya, within the call of that gigantic snake. They were trying, the gopis had to catch her, trying, no, so that she wouldn't jump in the water to try to save him. Everyone was so mad. Balaram had not been there before. That's why they were also so much in anxiety. They were thinking, oh, today Krishna went, but Balaram was not there to protect him. Something must have happened. When Balaram came, he saw Krishna, and he was thinking, hmm, usually Krishna doesn't you know, care to play with me in my form of Ananta Sage. But now today, he's playing with this worthless, you no know, mundane snake. Hmm, let us see what he has in mind. So because he was, he knew that his brother was invincible, Ajita, he was, he was smiling very peacefully. Then by seeing his smile, everyone became a little pacified. Now Krishna decided, I have put them in enough anxiety, their love has increased enough now. Because Krishna is always wanting to taste more and more love. After some time, the love is subsiding somewhat. So he's creating some boost so that this love will increase again. And how is he doing that? The usual way that he does. He puts his devotee in great anxiety, great separation. Then they feel so much more love, you know, upsurging, an upsurge of love in their heart. Then Krishna feels, oh, now again they love me so much. That's because he is now, he wants to enjoy the grass. So one thing he's interested in. So Krishna's decided now it's enough. Now their love has come to a good standard again. And now I can enjoy. I can show now my prowess. And then Krishna expanded his body and Kaliya had to let go of him. And at once Krishna jumped on his hood and he started to dance. And all of you who are going to uh, Vajramandal Parikram, you know it is the first day of the Parikram. And every time, or Rasamanda Maharaj, He's uh, explaining, chanting how Krishna was dancing on the heads of Kaliya. Tanda Bhagati Mundana Paranita Tabana Mali Tanda Bhagati Mundana Paranita Tabana Mali Pam 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 Pada Pada Gata Pam Pam pada pada gata pam 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 pada pada gata pam 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 pana pavara pam 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 pada pada gata pam 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 pana pavara ping 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 pinata karata ping 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 pinata karata nagabadhu ali Tanda Bhagati Mundana Parthi Sata Banamali Tanda Bhagati Mundana Parthi Sata Banamali Sun 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 Kathika Sun 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 Kathika Nam 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 Narada Mundana